Hello again, loyal podcast viewer. Welcome back to another episode of the UND Aerocast. Today we're coming to you from a little bit of a change of scenery now that it's snowed here in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Nonetheless, today we're going to talk about one of the most critical phases of the flight, known as the landing phase. According to the AOPA's 2005 NAL report, almost 40% of all general aviation related accidents could be attributed to the landing phase in the year 2004. To put that into perspective, during a normal flight, only about 1% of the entire normal flight time is comprised during this landing phase. So that really begs the question, what is it about the approach and landing that makes it so accident prone? Well, during normal approaches and landings, the aircraft is maneuvering at a much slower airspeed and much closer to the ground than it would be during normal cruise flight. And as a result, the demand for the pilot's skill in maneuvering the aircraft increases significantly and in some instances, due to varying circumstances, a normal attempt at a landing could end up as maybe either an incident or possibly even an accident. At UND Aerospace, several measures have been taken to help mitigate the chance of possibly having an accident occur during the landing phase. The UND policies and procedures state that if the stabilized approach criteria outlined in the appropriate aircraft standardization manual is not met by 200 feet AGL, then the pilot is obligated to execute a go-around. So the question becomes, what exactly is this stabilized approach that requires the pilot to execute a go-around prior to 200 feet AGL? Well, in this lesson, let's break down the stabilized approach criteria one by one. The first element of the stabilized approach requires that the aircraft be established at the proper airspeed. In our Warrior, for example, the proper airspeed would be 70 knots on final approach followed by a transition to our pre-calculated reference speed as the Warrior nears the runway threshold. Next, the pilot must determine whether or not the aircraft is established on the proper flight path, meaning a normal, approximate 3 degree glide angle towards the runway. The pilot can visually verify this normal flight path by ensuring that the pre-selected aiming point for touchdown maintains a consistent position through the aircraft's windscreen from the pilot's perspective. The pilot should then verify that the aircraft is properly configured for landing. This would include the gear checked in the down and locked position and flaps selected in the proper position for the wind conditions. As the gear and flaps are set, the pilot will then need to set the appropriate power setting that allows a steady descent and approach to be maintained for the specific approach configuration. Basically, this means that power settings should be consistent and only minor power adjustments should be necessary throughout the approach. Next, verify that the aircraft's sink rate is not abnormal. The airplane should be trimmed for the specific approach speed and power should be adjusted to maintain a consistent descent rate. If at any time after reaching 200 feet AGL, a change in pitch, power or airspeed should cause the aircraft's sink rate to depart from a normal consistent rate, a go-around should be commenced immediately. The final element of the stabilized approach criteria requires that the pilot verify that all checklists are complete. This would include the descent and before landing checklists. Once established on the final approach and prior to 200 feet AGL, the pilot should also complete a final check which, in the Warrior, consists of verifying gear down and locked and flaps as required. If flying the complex Piper Arrow or Seminole, the pilot must also verify the final check by calling out gear down and locked, propeller high RPM, and by stating the final flat position. At UND Aerospace, the oral verification of this check is tested with zero tolerance on check rides as it could mean the difference between a normal landing and a possible gear up landing. Once the final check has been completed by the pilot in command, verify that the final check is completed by calling out, Final Check Complete. If all of these previously discussed elements are established prior to 200 feet AGL, then the aircraft truly is established in a stabilized approach and is optimized to make a normal, safe landing. Use the stabilized approach criteria as your tool for judging the stability and the inherent safety of every landing. 
Pay attention to the 200 foot rule and always remember, never force a landing. As the pilot in command, you maintain the final authority as to whether or not the airplane's prepared for a final touchdown. For the UND Aerocast, I'm Anthony Bettini, and you guessed it, have fun and fly safe.